For obvious reasons, pilots do the bulk of their weather gathering and planning prior to takeoff. But it shouldn't end there, especially now that low-cost technology makes it easier to maintain weather awareness in the cockpit. As with most things in flying, context is key. On that clear and a million day with nothing in the forecast along the entire route, there's probably not much weather to occupy your attention. But much of the time, things are less clear cut. Case in point, deteriorating weather conditions. You know, that constant back and forth, do I press on? What's gonna be on the other side of these buildups? Uh, will I be able to get into my destination before the convective activity is, is on the field? In this video, we'll talk about how to maintain strong situational awareness with respect to weather and how to use that awareness to make good decisions should things not go as planned. In-flight weather monitoring is a critical component of good decision-making, whether you have a particular weather concern or not. The reason is simple. Forecasts aren't perfect, and conditions can change quickly. If you get a, a briefing at 9 o'clock in the morning, you depart it at 10.30 or 11, and you're an hour or two into your flight, you know, you're a good four hours away from that briefing, and, and conditions have changed. And so you need to be able to get new information, whether it be satellite observations or radar or something from a controller, and compare and contrast that to what you were told during the briefing. Fortunately, we've never had as many different sources for weather information in flight as we do now. You can look at your ADSB, FISB. Uh, if you're in an aircraft that's equipped with uh, NEXRAD, that's great. Um, but then there's also the, the older ways of getting weather in flight. I can listen to you know, different ATISs or AWASs in the area. I can uh, call flight service. I can listen to HIWAS. An excellent source of information that all too often goes unused is ATC. Key the mic. Ask, you know, what are we seeing up in front? Are there other aircraft that have perhaps taken the same route of flight? Are there better options? Are there suggestions? Um, is there another pilot on the frequency that can tell me what the flight conditions are uh, up ahead? All of those are questions that I don't hear nearly enough. Every air traffic control center has got weather service meteorologists in them, and a lot of that, the reason they're there is to provide weather information directly to pilots. So if they get in something they can't handle weather-wise, meteorologists can go stand right next to the air traffic controller, talk directly to the pilot, uh, and help them make a decision to uh, improve their situation. Another good source, arguably the best source for actual conditions, is one that's sadly neglected by GA pilots the PIREP. It's not that frequent that you see a pilot report made by an archer or by a 172 and I think it would help everyone out a lot if you know if you're flying around out there and hey you know maybe the weather is a little worse than the forecast said call flight service call local air traffic control and just say hey here's what's going on you know they don't need to know everything you know they, they want to know the important stuff is it really turbulent is there icing is you know is there precipitation things like that. What if the time comes when you need to turn around or divert? There's no way to cover every possibility, but in general, you're looking out for high-risk weather, convective activity, icing, strong turbulence, and ceilings or visibility below your personal minimums. When you can no longer easily avoid such conditions, it's time to move to Plan B. You do have a Plan B, right? Sure, it's usually possible to improvise one, but Careful pilots will have breakout points in mind ahead of time, in some cases more than one, depending on where they are in the flight. But weather aside, all too often the biggest problem is sitting in the left seat. You've got to make a decision, do I turn around you know, now before it gets worse and, and, and lose the, the two or three hours into my five-hour flight and maybe have to try again tomorrow? And I think that's where a lot of the get-home-itis type stuff that we talk about comes into play. Whatever you call it. Get home-itis, plan continuation bias, tunnel vision. The fact is that we have a very real tendency to push forward with the plan long after it's been invalidated by changing circumstances. As pilots, we need to be aware of this tendency and always be on the lookout for conditions that may call for a change of plans. The message is react. The time to do something is now. And here's another common misconception which leads so many pilots into trouble. 
the thought that because you've experienced something that was unexpected, that is somehow going to uh, run you afoul of, of the FAA or the law, your certificate's going to become compromised. Um, that is a, such a low priority, you know, that's almost laughable at the time. As things change, the idea is to enter a constant cycle of assessment, decision, and action. Not debate whether that AWOS was malfunctioning or whether the pilot of the Cessna in that pie rep knew what he was talking about. Likewise, don't pin your hopes on the one bright spot, the one airport that's holding out above minimums when everything else has gone down the tubes. In the end, if you're seriously thinking about diverting, that itself should be your cue to go to plan B. You know, possibly diverting, possibly turning around. Diverting, turning around is never a wrong decision. I'll emphasize that point again, it's never wrong. A no-go decision is never a wrong decision. Perhaps there could have been an alternate decision, but that certainly wasn't the wrong decision. Remember that you can always change your mind and keep going. But on the ground, you'll have the luxury of doing it in a comfortable FBO with a hot cup of coffee and plenty of time to look at the weather in detail. In personal GA flying, we don't have missions. Some flights are more important than others, but no flight is worth risking your life or the lives of your passengers. In most cases, good planning will keep you from having to make difficult in-flight decisions. But things happen, and when they do, having as much up-to-date knowledge as you can, coupled with an appropriately conservative approach to risk, will keep you from getting in over your head.